This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. A movie is like a flipbook. It plays images rapidly and we perceive it as animation. We can import these individual images as an image sequence. We can also export a movie to an image sequence as well. There are many reasons you would have an image sequence. A lot of 3D applications use image sequences as their export. To import an image sequence into Compressor, you can either click the button in the toolbar or use Job, New Job with Image Sequence. Navigate to Working Files Chapter 6 and select the folder called Sequence. Click Open, then open the Preview Monitor. If you're not seeing a display on the Preview Monitor, click and drag on the title bar to update it. Click the Play button to play back the movie. This is a very simple movie that has time code and indicates what frame is being played. If we jump back to the first frame or frame 0, we can see 0 on the time code and 0 in the frame. We can step through with the right arrow key. This will be helpful when we actually export into another image sequence at a different frame rate. For now, close the preview window. When you import an image sequence, the inspector shows a frame rate and a field dominance in the AV attributes inside the inspector window. If you like, you can also add audio to go along with your image sequence. For now, we'll create a new setting. From the drop down menu, choose Image Sequence. Image Sequence allows you to choose different image types. We have TIFF, which is an all purpose raster file, Targa, DPX, IFF, JPEG, OpenEXR, Photoshop, and PNG. The ones you'll come across the most are going to be TIFF, JPEG, Photoshop, and PNG. Occasionally, you'll come across OpenEXR if your images have HDR data. If you are working with legacy or very high-end applications, you may come across an IFF or possibly a DPX file. I prefer to work with PNGs. They're not as large as TIFFs, and they can't hold layers like TIFFs do, but they can hold an alpha channel, which is an advantage over JPEG. So I'll choose to export as a PNG. We can choose different frame rates or an automatic frame rate. For now, I'll choose a frame rate of 8. When we export our image sequence, we can choose to create a unique output directory, which you should want to do, as image sequences can become very, very large, and you don't want those scattered all over your desktop or source directory. We can choose to add leading zeros to frame numbers, which again, you probably want to do all the time. And you can scale the image to preserve the aspect ratio. As Compressor exports image sequences, it does export them as square pixels. So if you have an NTSC file that you need to preserve the aspect ratio of NTSC because it uses rectangular pixels, you may want to check this box. For now, I'll click Save and drag my settings onto my job. I'll switch the source to the desktop and click Submit. Looking at the history window, I can see it's almost finished. And now I'll hide compressor and look at my output. I'll select the first file and press the space bar on the keyboard to do a quick look. I can now use the down arrow to jump between my frames. If you recall, our video was originally 30 frames per second, well, 29.97. We then exported as 8 frames per second. As we move to frame 2, you can see we're at frame 4 of the original movie. And then frame 7, 11, 15, 19, 22, 26, and finally 30. We can see we're now at frame 8 of our new movie. If we jump to frame 16, we're now at 2 seconds. And 24 should take us to 3 seconds. Again, the frame rate option was selected here. If we would have went higher to let's say 59.94, we would have had double frames for every original frame. There are many times when you want to export as an image sequence, again using high-end 3D or compositing packages, or if you are exchanging video cross-platform and you don't know what codecs are supported on the other platform. 